Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is part two of my application for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada, the decision of the Federal Court of Appeal, which endorsed the CRTC's decision to abide by the Ontario Court of Appeal ruling in R versus CBC that says Rogers, the media, may exclude candidates from debates. This is my complaint from a 2007 exclusion, and it's going to apply to the 2009 exclusion you're doing right now in the St. Paul's by-election. I have an email here. The Dale Goldhawk show will be taped with the other guys in the, the big four favored candidates in the formal debate. And the other seven will be featured and be given the opportunity to vo voice our pitch for one minute. They call that fair. Statement of argument. <clears throat> Since I could not have been interrupting the next candidate during my one-minute opening statement, arguing that I interrupted after I had been interrupted by the moderator is a mere false pretext for denying equal time for exhibiting my party badge. The moderator had no right to interrupt my equitable share of the free-time political broadcast for the mere display of a party deck out. The broadcast simply says that free time must be shared equitably by all rival candidates and not that free time must be shared equitably by all rival candidates who obey the Rogers dress code. Issue number one. So 18, regardless, interrupting another candidate is not sufficient cause for not following the equitable time requirements of the CRTC, even if it was true, which it could not have been. 19. The CRTC has both a responsibility to enact regulations and supervisory responsibility to ensure a democratic election influenced by the greatest influence of all, the electronic media. Paragraph 10.1e of the Broadcasting Act empowers the Commission to make regulations respecting the proportion of time that may be devoted to the broadcasting of programs, including advertisements or announcements, of a partisan political character, and the assignment of that time on an equitable basis to political parties and candidates. Where's the all? 20. The CRTC has enacted several regulations requiring that, during an election period, broadcasters allocate time for broadcasting programs, advertisements, or announcements of a partisan political character on an equitable basis to accredited political parties and rival candidates in the election. With respect to debate programs held during the election, the Commission noted that it may be impractical to include all rival parties and candidates in one program. However, the Commission stated if this type of broadcast takes place, all parties and candidates should be accommodated, even if doing so requires that more than one program be broadcast. Applicant accepts this Commission statement as the rationale for why I ask that I be accommodated after the event in obtaining an equitable share of the broadcast pie, even if doing so required that more than one program be broadcast or appended. 21. Having no process to prevent undemocratic distributions shows the Commission's failure to regulate and supervise that the time pie be shared fairly. If one can figure out the distribution of a cherry pie is unfair before the pie is eaten, the Commission is derelict in being unable to judge that the distribution of the time pie is inequitable before it is allocated on an inequitable basis to not all rival candidates. 22. Public Notice 1995-44 states that, pursuant to the Ontario Court of Appeals decision in R versus CBC 1993, the Commission's regulations regarding the equitable allocation of time did not apply to election debate programs because they are not programs of a partisan political character. Unquote. This ruling that debates do not have to be shared equitably like other broadcasts of partisan political character because debates are not programs of partisan political character is contradictory. And once the Court of Appeal has ruled that the present regulations did not ensure, had ruled that the present regulations did not ensure that the time devoted to the broadcasting of programs of a partisan political character was shared on an equitable basis by all parties and rival candidates, the Broadcasting Act empowers the Commission to make better regulations to affect the intent that the time devoted to broadcasting of programs of a partisan political character was shared on an equitable basis by all political parties and candidates. Issue 4. 
23. The commission further noted that it had reiterated this statement in Broadcasting Circular 2007-5, issued in connection with the 2007 Ontario provincial election, ours, under discussion here, thus further not fulfilling their mandate to ensure a democratic use of the national airwaves by alerting the media that the Ontario Court of Appeal has okayed excluding any candidate they want without reason if they merely called it a debate. So the Commission to Ensure Democratic Election Broadcasting is peddling this judicial rationalization for why election debate broadcasts do not be shared equitably among all rival candidates anymore. Yet, it has the duty to come up with regulations that work and to supervise that democracy works, not accept a court ruling rationalizing candidate exclusion as still being democratic, the CRTC is not limited by the court's contradictory decision on its first bad efforts to ensure democracy and can always try to make better policy a second time. That's why I'm challenging not only the Ontario Court of Appeal ruling that debates featuring partisan political opinions are not partisan political programming, issue number six, but also that the CRTC is not limited by it and can enact new regulations trying to be more effective at ensuring democracy again. After all, sharing a pie isn't such a complicated issue. I mean, deal. Issue number seven. 24. Of course, it doesn't help that in the 1980s and 90s, the legislation said all rival parties and candidates. Applicant doubts that Parliament dropped the word all and suggests that the Commission chose to omit it in their policy statements. Of course, if Parliament has dropped the all from all parties and candidates, then that explains why the Ontario Court of Appeal would rule that the media can now exclude any candidate they want from debates, since they don't have to have them on at all. But applicant alleges that it is an omission of the word by the Commission, and not a deletion by Parliament. If Parliament did remove the all, I'm asking this Court to order them to put it back in. 25. Of course, if Rogers may exclude any candidate after total editorial discretion because they call it a debate, which they're doing now in the St. Paul's by-election, it's a bonus to hide such absolute control over participation if they can also make up rules offensive enough to prompt some candidates to rebel, like I did, especially those whom the changes in format are intended to disfavor. Of course, since the Commission has omitted to mention that the applicant had obeyed the Fuhrer's order before being ejected, the Commission must therefore fail to see that the issue herein is not breaking Big Brother's rules, it's about being punished after obeying, and about how much a candidate can be punished by loss of airtime after he has already obeyed. Part 5, Order Sought. On all these grounds, applicants seeks an order granting leave to appeal from the judgment of Justices Mark Nadone, John Maxwell, Evans, and Dennis Peltier, the Federal Court of Appeal, 09-8-19, May, July 27, 2009. So, a tale of authorities and my final comment, comment. So, why bother replying to the Supreme Court of Canada if it's so useless? Because I get to make my arguments. The Crown has to respond. And I get to beat them up once again. And having three of the highest referees in Canada fix the decision and award the victory to the guy who beat up, well, that's part of the show. Biggest loser in the world, right? Usually without any reasons, too, like these last guys. So three Federal Court of Appeal justices signed their names, allowing Big Brother to exclude candidates from debates. And now... I'm going to get three Supremes to put their names down on this atrocity against democracy. That's why it's worth having fought over 30 cases right to the top. Plus, I'm sure it's some kind of record for a non-lawyer, and it's therapeutic to put them through having to vindicate a violation of democracy, and then get to beat them up on a moral issue before the stinker of a decision is handed down. Okay, so it seems a bit dry, but the point is, there's a decision up there by the Ontario Court of Appeal that says if they call it a debate, then they don't have to include anybody they want. They can exclude anybody they want. They're giving us a token one minute, but they don't have to do that either. Well, this decision needs to be challenged, and I'm doing that. And also, what's going on in Toronto has to be challenged. So, what do you think I'm going to do? Lots I can do. 
why don't you go back and see what happened in the last provincial elections in Brant and, or the last elections in Guelph to find out the kind of options available to the resistance to this undemocratic action by Big Brother.